Hello, everyone, and welcome to the COVID Information Commons. My name is Florence Hudson. I'm the Executive Director for the Northeast Big Data Innovation Hub, which is headquartered at Columbia University in New York City, in New York, in the USA, and I'm PI for the COVID Information Commons. Today, what we'd like to do is give you an updated view and tour of the COVID Information Commons. We've done quite a lot to update it uh, since it was first created in 2020 when the COVID-19 pandemic began, and then we were fortunate enough to get a $2 million extension award in 2021 from the National Science Foundation, which is located here on our main homepage and website. We have advanced search tools, we have many new awards, and so welcome to this tour. So the website and URL for the COVID Information Commons is covidinfocommons.net. And when you go there, it will redirect you to this Columbia University website where we host it. So the COVID Information Commons serves as an open resource to explore research addressing the COVID-19 pandemic and enable researcher collaboration. We have two main search tools. One is the COVID Awards and PI database, which started as a very small database. We had about 700 uh, COVID-related NSF awards in 2020. And after we got the COVID Information Commons Extension Award in 2021, we actually increased the database to include all current NSF and National Institutes of Health or NIH awards related to COVID. And now there are over 9,000 of them as of June, 2023. We also have this really cool search tool, which is the COVID Research Explorer Machine Learning Maps tool. And I'll give you a tour of both of those. Also on our homepage, you can see current and useful information. You can read about the $2 million extension award, the COVID Information Commons or KIC extension uh, from 2021 and our goals with that. You could look at information and join our KIC student working group, which is working on a number of cool projects. And then you can also join the KIC student paper challenge, if you like, which we do every year. The first year we did it in 2021, there was just an undergraduate student paper challenge so we could figure it out. It went well. So then we did it again in 2022. And uh, we had an undergraduate community college and then a graduate um, cohort. And then this year we have the same going on and papers are due July 31st, 2023. Since we began the COVID Information Commons, the community has grown to nearly 3,000 individuals across over 700 organizations in the U.S., Puerto Rico, uh, Washington, D.C., and 35 other countries, which you can see here. So the COVID Information Commons main search tools, this first one is the COVID Awards uh, and PI database, and it now has 9,716 awards in it, which is amazing. And what you can do is uh, do a number of things here. One is you could look at whether uh, the awards are NSF awards or National Institutes of Health or NIH awards. You can choose a directorate here if you like. There's a drop down, and you can pick those. For example, if I pick technology, innovation, and partnerships, it will show a number of the awards in that area. You could also go in, clear the filter, and then look at some of the NIH awards by institute or center, or just say that you know you want to know all the awards by NSF or NIH. So you could look at funder here, um, and you could say, I want to select NIH. So if these 9,716 awards, 5,531 are funded by the National Institutes of Health in the US, and therefore, if you look at the other side of it, the National Science Foundation, 4,185. You can also query by awardee organization. Let's say, you know, I'm at Columbia University in New York City. So maybe I was looking at Columbia, uh, UNBIA. And you'll actually see there are a number of Columbias in here. If you think you're the only one, guess again. And so you can actually see a number of these in here. And then you can choose the one that might be most pertinent to you. And then you can see, um, you know, the different awardees. So what you can also do is you can go up here and put in a keyword search. Let's say you wanted, you would say, gosh, I think there's someone named Florence who has an award. Let me see if I can find her. F-L-O-R. Uh, oh, Florencia Sangaramano. Very interesting. Florence Hudson. Oh, here's the COVID Information Commons Extension Award she was telling me about. That's me. And then you can look here at the award, and then you can look at some information about the investigator. In this case, is me, uh, Florence D. Hudson. So, so um, when the you get information here, comments. oh, you actually get to see a video. 
So what we do is we ask each of the PIs, and we'll be asking the co-PIs soon too, that's one of the new extensions we've done with the Kiki Award, to fill in a little profile form and tell us more about themselves so that researchers or students or any citizen can go in and look at this. You can look at their ORCID ID. The ORCID brings you to um, this website, which actually shows employment, publications, projects that you've done, which is very cool. So um, it shows the, the, um, the websites that we have. Here's a personal website I have with all my work, um, the COVID Info Commons website, and then the Big Data Hub where we're headquartered. This is a video that I did at a COVID Information Commons webinar. And so we put those in here as well. And you can see the other awards that I've received and the keywords related to the work that I do. So that's an example of what you can find in the COVID Information Commons in the COVID Awards and PI database. We also have, as you saw on the first page, the COVID Research Explorer ML Maps or Machine Learning Maps tool, which you can get to from the drop-down menu from any of the uh, menu from any of the parts of the website. So this is a machine learning clustering tool, which actually looks at all of the awards in the database at the time and uses a tool from a company called Carrot Search in Poland that has this Lingo 4G Explorer tool. And it actually does an analysis of all the awards and then clusters them by theme. So you can see here, there's some interesting uh, thematic areas. This is cells, lung, respiratory, very interesting in a number of universities or institutions or organizations that have been funded by NSF or NIH in that focus area. Here's students, education, and viral. Very interesting here. But let's say you say, gosh, there's so many of these awards. What if we were to try to skinny this down? What if I just want to look at epidemiology? So you put an epidemiology in the query, then you hit analyze, and now we have 367 awards in scope. So it's a little tighter. And let's say this is your area and you're in very interested in dynamics of transmission um, and centers related to COVID. So you could look here and then here we have a list of awards by institution. Let's say you say, very interesting, UCSF, University of California, San Francisco. I wonder who that is. So you can go up here to this little gear box, which I call a Mickey Mouse head. Um, you can go here. And then as you know, we're looking at UCSF here, we go here and then we say, you know, instead of looking at awardee organization, can you label this by principal investigator? And then you can say, oh, this is Priya. Oh, I know Priya. Or let's say you look here and you say, Alexander, gosh, we were postdocs together. And then you go back here and say, now what institution is Alexandra in? Then you go back here and you say awardee organization and you can see, ah, at Georgia State, very interesting. So this allows you to find other organizations and other PIs that might be doing research in your area. What you could also do is say, you know, I wanna find people close to me. So I was recently presenting in Texas. So let's say I put Texas in here and then I analyze that. And so there are 200 awards here. And so um, I actually have this um, situated so that if it's in the same state, it's the same color, which makes it easier. So then you ask, well, why do some of these other awards that are in different states have the word Texas? So let's look at this for an example. University of Utah was awarded this award, but you see the awardee organization is University of Utah, you can see on the right, but um, they're talking about Baylor College of Medicine, Texas Children's Hospital. So it could be that the abstract and the content is related to Texas. Um, so this is a tree map, which is actually my favorite because I really love the, the colorful left brain, right brain opportunity <laughs> to be able to see some of this information. You could also look at a topographical map and here the way it is displayed and here it tells you how long it's working, which is very, very wonderful, very honest to say how long it's taking it to do the query. You can actually look at what some of the, the big animal pictures as we say, so network, market, consortium, cohort. These are some of the areas that have a lot of um, a lot of research associated with them in the database. PTSD. As I say, I think we all have a little PTSD from COVID. You know, we've all been through a lot around the planet um, who have been affected by it. And so this is another view that you have. Um, and you can also go in here and for any of the, I prefer the tree map, as I said, so I'll go there. For any of these that you click on, these awards, here's Stanford University. Over here, it will actually uh, give you a little information about that award. So the name of the award, a little bit about the abstract, the award ID number, 
Um, this is NIH, very long numbers. NSF has seven digits, that's it. Um, the PI name, the awardee organization, Stanford University. And let's say you don't know where Stanford is. You know, you just moved to the US, you're trying to collaborate, you're gonna be visiting, you know, um, a state and you wanna know. So let's say you say, you know, I really like to know what state these people are in. So you can click on fields here. And here where it's, you see it says state don't show. You can say, you know, show as a tag, put a tag in there so I know. Um, and now it will say state California. So this is really very rich in function. And we've had PIs that have used this to find other collaborators. So that's a wonderful tool for you. So that's the Lingo 4G tool. Um, when you go back to the COVID Info Commons site and you look at the main page again, um, you can actually also go to this place where you can create or enhance your COVID PI or co-PI profile. So if you go in here and you're a PI or a co-PI for an NSF or NIH award currently, and we're looking to maybe add other awards in the future, you can actually give us more information that we can add to your PI profile like I showed you for mine. So first you put in your, your name, um, your ORCID ID, if you have one, type NA if you don't have one, because ORCIDs are very powerful to find other content related to a PI. Your email address, we make sure we have the right one in the database. What funding agency you're working with, um, your award number, and your research award title. And we ask you to fill this in once for each award that you have. And then say if you're a PI or co-PI, because this was initially a PI database, but we want to add the co-PIs as well. And then you can add keywords related to your COVID research. Um, you could add P your, your website or project relevant websites and DOIs of articles and data sets. And then you submit it. You'll get an email saying that it was submitted, and then we will be updating the database with it. So it's a great opportunity to share more information about you and your work, and then to populate things that um, other people can find, and you can find others. We also have a number of other cool things. So we do um, kick webinars, we do COVID Info Commons webinars, and we have a number of lightning talks and webinars available. So you could look at actually the separate uh, research lightning talks. When we do a webinar, we usually have between I would say three and eight PIs that present at the beginning of the pandemic. We had more PIs present for less amount of time because it was the beginning of their research. So they didn't really have a lot to report yet, but they talked about what they were going to be doing research on. Now we have over 120 of these here where we take the webinars and then we cut the presentations by each PI down into its own little video and then post it here. So you can actually look at them by topical area or by name. Here's an example, um, Aditya. Aditya was actually one of the COVID Info Commons Student Paper Challenge winners in 2021. And so because he was a winner, we invited him to present on a webinar shoulder to shoulder with NSF and NIH PIs. And so now we have a recording of his video and we also have an English transcript of the video written so you could read it if you're hard of hearing. And we also have it translated into Spanish because we have a large Spanish speaking population with the hub across the US and around the world. So these are all resources you could look at. Um, there are, there's also a whole video library that actually has all of the webinars in it. If you wanted to see an entire webinar, um, and archive videos, the original ones on the COVID Info Commons, we're adding this new one to it. And then information about the COVID Info Commons student paper challenge, which is very exciting. Um, you can also look at COVID publications and we invite you to submit those. Um, you can send an email to, you can see contact us at the bottom here you, at to info at covidinfocommons.net. And if you know of a publication related to COVID that you would like to have us post here, we vet all of them. We try to check these, uh, these links to make sure that they're still working. Um, and then we can add it here. There are also data sets, and you can look at these data sets around the planet. Um, they're available from multiple different perspectives. They're from, six, I think, six of the continents we have. You can see Africa, Australia, a bunch in the US, you know, China, um, and a number of, or you can do a keyword filter and find the data sets. We also have um, research working groups that we, um, we are holding. We have PI working groups and we have a student working group. And you can learn all about this on this website. You can look at events um, and you can also look at news. You can see the team 
which includes uh, people from around the country. Um, uh, Jeanette and I are the PI and co-PI on the COVID Info Commons. This is our team, our system architect, Ryan, Lauren and Emily. Uh, Lauren's our operations communications manager, helps us a lot with the website and the events. Emily is the National Student Data Corps Program Coordinator for the Hub, and she manages the Kick Student Paper Challenge now. And we also have Columbia University's IT, which hosts this for us, Columbia University Libraries that helps us manage the information and actually takes the, um, the research lightning talks and actually puts them up on the Columbia Academic Commons. And then we have our colleagues around the country and the other three big data innovation hubs, Renata from the South Big Data Hub, John from the Midwest, and then Ashley from the West Hub. And we all work on this together. So we hope you found this super valuable. And if you have any questions, send an email to info at covidinfocommons.net, which you can find on the bottom of any of these web pages. And thank you for being part of the KIC community.